Shalom, brothers, and this is your girl, Sophia Spiritual Light. And um, we're going. This is a continuation of our um, our series on the Olympic spirits. Now we have, um, boy, we hit pay dirt yesterday. Um, you know, with the connections between um, Enoch and the Sybils slash Lucy slash um, um, well, Diana. And uh, the, in, in, in delving into Diana, um, we basically have um, the individual who is the, I would say, the primary representation of the mother on, um, on this planet. And um, why, why would I put it like that? Well, you know, when you get to study in Sophia, Sophia has really been corrupted by the intelligentsia. They have turned Sophia into something that you can't relate to. And that's what I was saying on my video yesterday. People don't understand Sophia. They can't possibly wrap their mind around it. And they can't because the the powers that be, the powers that were, um, they made it that way. They made it so that you can't connect with Sophia. You got to, you know you know, go through all of this, you know, complicated, you know, thought processes on how, you know, uh, whatever she is, you know what I mean? It's very, very complicated. However, with Diana, Diana is very relatable. Diana is the people's goddess. You know what I mean? She's the one that people relate to when people, you know, get to talking about Sophia, you could tell their, I mean, just look at myself, I'm, you know, overeducated, you know, well-read in, in certain areas and stuff like that. And so that's people who, who connect with Sophia, but people who connect with Diana, those are the people, the actual folk people. And, um, for our purposes, I do believe that this is going to be better for, for the daughters of Zion to work with Diana as opposed to working with Sophia. I mean, at some, at some point, you know, they, where they're hiding the relatable information about Sophia will be made public, you know, um, you know, the Vatican or whoever I have it. Eventually it'll be made public. But for right now, <clears throat> in purposes of working with the, you know, the divine feminine in a, in a relatable way, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to go with Diana and, um, um, we're going to talk. So that's what this video is about. This video is about, um, the goddess Diana and you know how she relates to our people and all kinds of things so believe it or not you find diana in the bible that's where we're going to start if you go to acts 19 some of you have already um are already familiar with this but i'm just going to read it. it says diana of the ephesians and the same time there arose no small stir about that way for a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, bought no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath forsaken and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods, which are made with hands so that not only our craft is in danger to set to be set at naught but also that the temple of the great goddess diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed whom all asia and the world worshipeth and when they heard these sayings they were full of wrath and cried out saying great is diana of the ephesians and the whole city was filled with confusion and have caught gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. And when Paul would have entered an in unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused. And the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. <laughs> Sounds like some Negroes. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward. And Alexander beckoned with hand and would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew with all one voice 
about the space of two hours cried out, great is Diana of the Ephesians. For two hours, they say great is Diana of the Ephesians. Okay. And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not that the city of Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, ye ought to be quiet and do nothing rashly. For ye have brought these men, which are neither robbers of churches nor blasphemers of your goddess. Wherefore, if Demetrius and the craftsmen, which are with him, have a matter against any man, the law is open, and there are deputies. Let them implead one another. But if ye inquire anything concerning other matters, it shall be determined in lawful assembly. For we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar, there being no cause whereby we may be given account of this concourse. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. Okay, so what's interesting about this story is this is the end. This this is it. They don't say anything else about the goddess. And what I took from it is that you have Paul again, this you know, I said to one of the sisters that if I had to choose disciples, it would not be Paul. Paul would have been off the list because this man hates women. He just does. Like, And I understand it was not the time for the mother to be invoked the way that they were doing it. But why is it that everywhere Paul goes, he's turned down, he's busting down women? Like, why is this? Why? What is his issue with the mother? Like he's got a serious issue with the mother. And, you know, I understand it wasn't the time for that, but still he's busting down women wherever he goes. I don't like it. So, but it doesn't. And another thing is like, you know, the Demetrius, he understood that they were trying to, they were going to end their whole industry. And it wasn't just that they were going to end their whole industry. What else did he say? He also said that they're going to tear down her, um, her temple. And that was, they had a problem with that. So here you do have men, you know, standing up and saying, wait a second, you know, you're coming in and evangelizing the people. Not only are they, not only is that going to dry up our business, that's also, y'all also going to convince these people to destroy this temple. And we can't have it. So these are your alpha men. These, these are what your alpha men look like. They see that the women are being destroyed and they come in and they say, no, nah, we're not, we, we have to stand up and say something. Not only is this going to affect our livelihood, it's you're going to tear down the um, temple. We don't have, we have a problem with that. All right. So the next, um, we're going to go into a book here and then we're going to go into an article. Oh, not this one. Where's the other? Here we go. Um, this book is called, um, let me show y'all the cover. There we go. This is called Aradia or the Gospel of the Witches. This book by, um, Charles Leland, um, from 1899. And we actually discussed this book. Um, it was in the article that I read yesterday. And when I finished the video, I went to look for the book because I said, well, why I never looked for this book and good God almighty, we have a gold mine here so we're just going to read a little bit of the preface we're not going to go into the actual book i did put a link in the um community post for this book i highly suggest you go and download it okay so if this reader has ever met with the works of the learned folklorist g petra or the articles contributed by lady ver de ver to the italian revista or uh, that of J.H. Andrews to folklore, he will be aware that there are in Italy great numbers of large strange or fortune tellers or witches who by who divine by cards perform strange ceremonies in which spirits are supposed to be invoked and make and sell amulets and in fact comport themselves generally as their reputed kind are wont to do be they black voodoos in America or sorceresses anywhere. But you hear that? They're comparing these people to the black voodoos in America. I just, in America now, America. Okay, I'm sorry. I just want to point that out. This is 1899. This is not 
This this is not 1960, 1970. This is not 1700s. This is 1899. This is after emancipation. Okay. This is after the dec- um, the uh, Emancipation Proclamation. This is when our people were on the rise at the turn of the century. Our people were doing voodoo here in America. Okay. He didn't say the islands. He said America. But the Italian strega or sorceresses in certain respects are different, are a different character from these. In most cases, she comes from a family which her calling or art has been practiced for many generations. So did we. I have no doubt that there are instances in which the ancestry remounts to medieval Roman may be Etruscan times. The result has naturally been the accumulation in such families of much tradition. But in Northern Italy, as literature indicates, Though there has been some slight gathering of fairy tales and popular superstitions by scholars, there has never existed the least interest as regarded in the strange law of the witches, nor any suspicion that it embraced an incredible quantity of old Roman minor myths and legends, such as Ovid has recorded, but of which much escaped him and all other Latin writers. The ignorance was greatly aided by the wizards and witches themselves in making a profound secret of all their traditions, urged thereto by fear of the priests. In fact, the latter all unconsciously actually contributed immensely to the preservation of such lore, since the charm of the forbidden is very great, and the witchcraft, like the truffle, grows best and has its raciest flavor when most deeply hidden. However, this may be both priest and wizard are vanishing now with incredible rapidity. It has even struck a French writer that Franciscan in a railway carriage is a strange anomaly and a few more years of newspapers and bicycles, heaven knows what it will be when flying machines appear, will probably cause an evanishment of all. Uh, Not really. Um, We're going to, well, let's go. However, they die slowly and even... Yet, there are old people in the Romagna of the north who know the Etruscan names of the 12 gods and inventions, invocations to Bacchus, Jupiter, and Venus. Now, we just heard about Jupiter, right? Okay. Um, Mercury and the lairs or ancestral spirit and in the cities are women who prepare strange amulets over which they mutter spells, all known in old Roman time, and who can astonish even the learned by their legends of Latin gods mingled with lore which may be found in Cato or Theocritus. One with one of these, I became intimately acquainted in 1886 and have ever since employed her specially to collect among her sisters of the hidden spell and in many places all the traditions of the olden time known to them. It is true, I have drawn from other sources, but this woman, by long practice, has perfectly learned what few understand, or just what I want, and how to extract it from those of her kind. Among other strange relics, she succeeded, after many years in obtaining the following gospel, which I have in her handwriting, a full account of its nature with many details will be found in the appendix. I do not know definitely whether my informant derived part of these traditions from written sources or oral narration, but beca- but believe the chief lead, it was truly the latter, meaning from oral narration. However, there are few wizards who copy and preserve their documents relative to their art. That's not really true. I have not seen my collector since the gospel was sent to me. I hope at some future time to be better informed. For a brief explanation, I may say that witchcraft is known to its votaries as la vecha religion or the old religion of which Diana is the goddess and her daughter Aradia or Herodias, the female messiah. Uh Uh-oh, the female messiah. Why is that? Why is, why is this the female, what is the female messiah? What is that? Oh, you mean the Christo Sophia, like I told y'all about yesterday? Okay, got it. And that this little work sets forth how the latter was born, came down to earth, established witches and witchcraft, and then returned to heaven. With it are given the ceremonies and invocations or incantations to be, to be addressed to Diana and Aradia, the exorcism of Cain, the spells of the Holy Stone, Rue, Verbena, constituting, as the text declares, 
the regular church service to speak, which is to be chanted or pronounced at the witch meetings. There are also included very curious incantations or benedictions of the honey, meal, salt, or cakes of the witch supper, which is curiously classically the evident relic of the Roman mysteries. The work could have been extended in and finitum by adding it to it the ceremonies and incantations which are which actually form a part of the scripture of witchcraft but these nearly all or at least a great number are to be found in my works entitled excrucian roman remains and legends of florence i have hesitated to compile such a volume before ascertaining whether there is sufficiently large number of, of the public who would buy such a work since writing the foregoing i have met and read a very clever and entertaining work entitled il romano de settimani by g Caval cavagri 1889 in which the author in the form of a novel vividly depicts the manners habits of thought and especially the nature of witchcraft and the many superstitions current among the peasants of lombardy Unfortunately, notwithstanding his extensive knowledge of the subject, it never seems to have once occurred to the narrator that these traditions were anything but nauseous nonsense or abominably unchristian folly. That there exists in them marvelous relics of ancient mythology and valuable folklore, for which is the very cordium of history, is as uncared for by him as it would be by a common Zocco. Zocalon or tramping Franciscan, one would think it might have been suspected by a man who knew that a witch really endeavored to kill seven people as a ceremonial rite in order to get the secret of endless wealth that such a sorceress must have a store of wondrous legends. But of all this, there is no trace, and it is very evident that nothing could be further from this from his mind that that there was anything interesting from higher more genial point of view of it all okay um so let's see we're going to go to this um i just want to point this out i'm not sure we're going to really talk about this i'll go to it but look what they call the shabbat truing true ju trade juenda or witch meaning the shabbat or Treyuenda or witch meeting. I just want to make sure y'all heard that right. All right, let's look at how Diana gave birth. We'll start with that story. So, how how Diana gave birth to Aradia. Okay, this is the gospel of the witches. This is the story. Diana greatly loved her brother Lucifer, the god of the sun and moon, the god of light, splendor, who was so proud of his beauty and who for his pride was driven from paradise. Diana had by her brother a daughter whom they gave the name Aradia. In those days, there were on the earth many rich and many poor. The rich made slaves of all the poor. In those days were many slaves who were cruelly treated in every place, tortures in every castle, prisoners. Many slaves escaped. They fled to the country and thus they became thieves and evil folk. Instead of sleeping by night, night, they plotted, escaped, and robbed their masters and slew them. So they dwelt in the mountains and forests as robbers and assassins, all to avoid slavery. Diana said one day to her daughter, Aradia, let's read the English. Tis true indeed, thou art a spirit art, but thou wert born but to become again a mortal. Thou must go to earth below to be a teacher unto the women and men who fain would study witchcraft in thy school. Yet like Cain's daughter thou shalt never be, yet like Cain's daughter thou shalt never be, nor like the race who have come at last, wicked and infamous from suffering, as the Jews and wandering Zingari, who are all thieves and knaves, like unto them ye shall not be, and thou shalt be the first of which is known, and thou shalt be the first of all in the world and thou shalt teach the art of poisoning of poisoning those who are great lords of all yea thou shalt make them die in their places and thou shalt bind the oppressor's soul with power and when ye find a peasant who is rich then ye shall teach the witch your pupil how to ruin all his crops with tempest dire 
with lightning and with thunder terrible and with the hail and the wind and when priest shall and when a priest shall do you injury by his benedictions ye shall do to him double the harm here we go double again and do it in the name of me, Diana, queen of the witches of all. And when the priest or nobility shall say to you that you should put your faith in father, son, and Mary, then reply, your God, the father, and Maria are three devils. For the true God, the father, is not yours. For I have come to sweep away the bad, the men of evil, all will I destroy. Ye who are poor, suffer with hungry hunger keen and toil in wretchedness and suffer to full off imprisonment yet with all ye have a soul and for your sufferings ye shall be happy in the other world but ill the fate of all who do ye wrong now when Arabia had been taught to work all witchcraft how to destroy the evil race of oppressors she imparted to her pupils and said unto them go to the translation when I have, when shall I, ha, when I shall have departed from this world, whenever ye have need of anything, once in the month, when the moon is full, ye shall assemble in some desert place or in a forest together join to adore the potent spirit of your queen, my mother, great Diana. She who is fain would learn all sorcery, yet has not won its deepest secrets. Them, my mother will teach her in truth all things yet as yet unknown and ye shall be freed from slavery and so ye shall be freed in everything and as the sign that ye are truly free ye shall be naked in your rights both men and women also this shall last until the last of your oppressors shall be dead and ye shall make the game of benevento extinguishing the lights and after that shall hold your supper thus let's look at this the shabbat oh the shabbat or witch meeting oh wait a minute now now imagine this how is it that the the so-called jews got a shabbat and then the witches have a shabbat i just want to point that out because i know that's going to be lost on some men you know i know y'all not going to get that Y'all going to miss that. The Shabbat is, is for the students, the, the children of the mother. You know, it's for the, the the daughters of Zion. That's what the Shabbat is really for. And look what you're supposed to do. All, you know, people have told me you're not supposed to do anything on it on that day. This is what it says. Here follows, the, okay, the Shabbat, true, true, true Juinda or witch meeting, how to consecrate the supper. It says here follows the supper of what it must consist and shall and what shall be said and done to consecrate it to Diana. So you should take the meal, salt, honey and water and make this incantation. I'm not going to read this, but I want to point this out. The meal, salt, honey and water. What does that sound like? Because to me, it sounds like cornbread, cornmeal, salt, honey and water. I mean, you throw some eggs in there, you have cornbread cake. But to me, that's literally sounds like cornbread. I don't know about anybody else. I've been making cornbread a long time. You have to have meal, salt, um, honey f to make it sweet, and water or, or milk. So to me, that sounds like cornbread. I'm just saying maybe other people will make it differently. And then the fact, well, we're not going to go into that. Let's look at our other book here. I mean, this is not a book. This is an article. So um I will share the link to the article, but listen, it's in Italian. So you, if you have an iPhone, you can translate the article by hitting, um, on the, 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 the search engine bar where you put the, um, where you put the URL link, you can hit the button and it should translate the article for you. Now my phone is updated to the latest whatever software. So maybe that's why mine work. It might not work for you. So if you have a problem with the translation, send me an email and I will send you this article. And we're not going to read this whole article, but, um, this article is called, um, Diana's worship. Okay. And that's, that's one of their pictures of her, right? Um, 
And we're just we're not gonna read this whole thing because it's like 20 pages, but I just want to read some of it. It says Diana is an Italic Latin Roman goddess. She is a lady of the forest and wild animals, the guardian of sources and streams, the protector of women, especially in childbirth, and one who established the power of royalty. Now, this is the exact opposite of what they said Lilith is. If you remember all the way back when we when we talked about Lilith. This is they say that Lilith was killing babies. They say that she was doing this and doing that. Well if that doesn't even make any sense. That that's I'm sorry. This stuff is just some of it is ridiculous. All right, let's just go to um now look at this picture, right? You know, I posted this picture. This is their Diana. Why is she black? Anybody? anybody these people ever tell the truth about anything why is she black and it looks like she's covered in corn but why is she black I'm just you know as an aside all right now this story is this creation story is a little bit different than the other one we're gonna start um we're going to start at the bottom of this page. All right. It says incarnation of nature, creative, nourishing, destructive, protector of the Amazons, like her warriors and hunters, and like her independent of the yoke of man through meditation of the Greek colonies of Southern Italy, assuming its character of goddess of the hunt and the moon. He hunt, he hunted for mountains and woods followed by nymphs with whom he danced on the meadows. Protector and animal hunted, hunter together. As a hunter, her symbol was the bow, and at night she went hunting at the light of torches. She loved her nymphs, which she always surrounded by as long as they didn't fall in love or mate. Daughter of Zeus and Latona and sister of Apollo, Diana is born in Delos and as soon as she is born, helps her mother bring her brother into the world. At just three years old, she asks, he, she, it says she, he, but she means she, she asks his, her father, Zeus, several things, eternal virginity, as many names as Apollo had. That's the reason why she has so many names. As she wanted as many names as Apollo had. A bow and arrows like her own, the task of bringing light, a saffron colored hung hunting tunic with a red edge up to the knees, 60 young Ocean nymphs, or I guess they mean um, like the mermaids, um, all of the same age as her bridesmaids, 20 nymphs of the rivers coming from Amenesis and Crete to take care of her shoes and dogs when she was not engaged in hunting, all the mountains of the world, a city of her father's choice. Of course, the women often invoked her as her mother Latona gave birth to her without pain. And with the moray, the fate feast shortly after her birth made her a patron of the parts. Eternally, at this, um, well, eternally virgin and shy, she was a lover of solitude and an enemy of banquets. Had cast since, mm, cast since vow. For this reason, she protected those who remained chaste. She gave women the pains they served for childbirth, however, cushioning the pain and protected them from perpetual fever, at the time assisting them in childbirth, also teaching them to care for and educate children, represented in a hunter suit with a fair and a bow and with the head adorned with the quarter moon, accompanied by a greyhound or deer. All right. Um, there's a bunch of different Artemis, I mean, um, Diana's too. Um, let's see. I want to point out one more thing in this article. Let's read this one here. In classical age, Diana is the sister of Apollo, but it is a late myth. The two deities are originally autonomous, although one of the so-called Homeric hymns emphasizes their familiarity with the sun god. I'm not going to read that. Diana is a vengeful goddess, and one of her first acts was with her brother to put Niobe's children to death. While Apollo killed one after another the six boys who were hunting on the Citerone, Diana killed the six daughters who remained at home. The, this act has been de um, dictated to the two gods by their love for their mother, which Niobe insulted. Still, to defend Latona, the children 
the two children just born killed the dragon who came to attack them. Still for her, they attacked and killed Tizo, who was trying to rape Latona. Diana participated in the fight against the giants. Her opponent was the giant Gracion, whom she killed with the help of the demigod Heracles. Okay, so this is into the, the that um, myth. All right. This is about the Italian Diana. Diana is an ancient goddess, the DIA, lady of forests and beasts, guardian of sources and streams, goddess of nature and agriculture, protector of chaste women. Cast, not virgin, meant to, in, to mean independent women who do not under father's husbands. The root is found in the archaic Latin term duis, of light, dadis, light of day, divine. So the original name would have been divine. And, and if y'all don't know, that's actually my one of my daughter's names. Um, what, my youngest daughter's name. The light which um, the name refers would be one that filters from the fronds of the trees in the wooded clearings, while that of the moon is rejected because of such association with the goddess was very late. The term God comes from her and not the other way around because the matriarchy and the mother goddess in the Mediterranean as in the whole world long preceded the patriarchy and the God and God the father. Wow. The term God comes from her. Wow. Like all great primitive mothers, she had three faces, birth, growth, and death. As goddess of birth, she helped pregnant women give birth just as she made the vegetation bloom in the spring. The main place of worship of Diana Italica was near a small lazo stream of Nemi on the Albani Hills, and the forest that surrounded was called Nemus Arcanium due to its proximity to the town Aricia. And it's Aricia, probably. Um, the sanctuary of Aricia may have been new, the new federal sanctuary of the Latins after the fall of Alba Longa, according to what Cato reported in the origins, that is the Tolavan dictator Menio is, oh my goodness, I'm not going to read this. I'm just, okay, that to the bottom of the page. The goddess of Nemi is called Diana Nemorence, but her oldest form was Diana. The oldest form, Diana, was Inanna, the counterpart of Inanno or Diano. Macrobio says that the two faces of Janus derive from his fusion with Gianna or Jana, who represent who represent throughout the Mediterranean. And another thing about that, I didn't really get to talk about this, but that also passes through to the Hindu legends of John, Jana and Jano, and it's it's mm, mm, mm. this stuff just all started to tie together when I was reading it. All right, let's see. It was, a, it was a cult of the fertility of nature, of the eternal cycle of death and rebirth of the sun, of the union between the sun and the moon. Jana and Jano are the guardians of the gates, the solstices, where the gates of the universal cycle, sunrise and sunset, were the gates of the sky in the daily cycle, and therefore the guarantors of balance and the transition between life and death. Titus, Livy, and other great historians affirm that several centuries before Christ, Several centuries before Christ, the Mons and Aldeas, there were temples dedicated to deities, especially Diana, the venerated and the beautiful goddess of the woods and hunting. It is no coincidence, coincidence that in the area we are, Mont, where at, we are at Monte Cavo, or Gavo as it was called in antiquity, there are woods of the Artesimo dedicated precisely to the goddess of wild nature. As the goddess of growth, Diana blessed the aerated fields. A cult remained for a thousand years AD with the crunch of Catholicism invoked in the collection of wild and healing herbs, especially on January 6th. Now, when I read that, especially on January 6th, this is just another way that these people use and abuse the angels. So the Congress holds its, you know, ceremony to, um, to select the president based on the votes on January 6th. This is what happens on January 6th. So this is just another way they use and abuse the mother. So that's why the spilling of 
the blood of a black woman, as I mentioned in one of my other videos on January 6th, is what started this whole thing. That was a bridge too far. They, The only person's blood to spill on that day, I mean, uh, in death, was um, Roseland Boylan, which I talked about. And that literally happened on January 6th. On the day, what do they say? When um, invoke the collection of wild and healing herbs. So I guess they thought invoking, killing a black woman was going to get them, um, you know, he some kind of healing with their country. In which she flew over the fields, I just wanted to point that out, I'm sorry. In which she flew over the fields blessing them. You know, she went over the fields blessing them on that day, which is why they have, that's the day that they pick for their um, selecting of the president. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. For this reason, it was replaced with Befana, who was a good old woman, but also half witch who flies over the world with a broom that night. As Diana flew that night into the sky with her nymph, she invented the Sabbath, which witches in the sky of the faithful broom. The Shaba, Shab, Shab, Saba derives from, a, from the cult of Diana Caria, of cult forbidden to men, which took place around the walnut, which, by which its confirmation resembles the brain with mysteric rites then abolished by patriarchy. So the priestesses became the witches of Bene, Benevento because the priestesses immersed themselves in the Suabs River today, Saturday, from which the term Shaba originates. As a goddess of death, she was venerated as Ekate, the nocturnal goddess of the moon. In fact, very venerated in the Anta. Anatolian region of Korea from which the cult comes. In fact, Livy tells it was a servant to um, Tuulis who placed the temple of Diana Setonia on the advent goddess of the moon hunter, also the goddess of death invoked by the name of Ekate. Later, it was assimilated into the Greek Artemis by losing its mystery attributes. The Italic goddess became Roman and Callus saying, okay, I'm not going to read that. Um, the goddess Diana in her lunar manifestation was the object of cult of witchcraft of the Italian tradition. As Charles Leland reports in the Sorcerer's Gospel, Diana is worshipped as the goddess of the poor, the oppressed, and the persecuted by the Catholic Church. To ensure that the cult of witchcraft went ahead, he sent his daughter Arad she sent her daughter Aradia to free the slaves from the oppressors and to divulge the cult of the goddess. And then we have all the names here. I'll just read some of them. Agrotera from Agra, we're hunting for the first time. Panagia, who which reigns in the woods, which I think that's also the name of that um, supercontinent, right? Anatide, Innocent, Arduina, Throwing Strally, Lam, Limnatide, Protector of Fishermen, Limnia of the Lake, Orthea, Strait, Lig, Ligodesma, Bound to the Willow, Corfia of the Top, Daphnia of the Laurel, Lycia, Goddess Lupa, Ingina, Goat Goddess, Caria, Kari, uh, Tide, Goddess of the Walnut, Arista, Excellent, Callista, Beautiful, Polymatis with many beasts. He also, okay, it's a crazy thing about this thing with the walnut is that my great grandmother's house, there are big giant walnut trees. And also, just in general, the, the, the place where I'm from, there are so many walnut trees, like in the places where they haven't destroyed everything, tore everything down. There's walnut trees like everywhere. It's so unusual. Um, it's really, really unusual, but I'm starting to understand why. All right. This is says her, her attributes. Um, we're going to read some of this. The symbolism of the goddess is linked to the world of the forest already in many gems. You can see her carrying a frond in one hand and a cup filled with fruits in the other standing next to an altar behind which you can see a deer his sacred animal par excellence on a silver candlestick preserved in the vatican museums of the goddess has no human shape but a sim a series of symbols a laurel tree sacred to apollo on which the hunting weapons were hung the bow the carp and the spear a conical pole to which horns and deer are applied an altar 
filled with offerings, including a pine cone, but it was also strongly linked to agriculture. Um,